round of applause, you know, you know. This is absolutely fantastic. I'm excited to see Levin and Sharon begin to minister. Come right here in the camera, you know. And these are our spiritual kids. We absolutely love them, you know. And uh, come on, stretch your hand towards them. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for Levin, Sharon, and Ariel. Thank you for their life. Thank you. For all that you do in them, Lord, thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you for their obedience. Thank you that they have said yes to you all the way, Lord, without looking back. And God, I pray for an anointing to come upon Sharon today, Lord, as she ministers your word. Holy Spirit, I ask you, let our hearts burn within us and yearn for you, just as the road to Amos, that the hearts burned within us. Longing for you, Lord. Lord, let that happen this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. 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 Okay, praise God. Good morning, church. Good morning. This, it's been a while, but um, praise God uh, for this opportunity of course, um, we're doing a series on parenting. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. Um, my qualifications in the area of parenting, as you know, definitely not, uh, and it's, it's, a good, it's, a good, it's a good thing that um, Ashwin was there last week because uh, we know how qualified we are. Um, Pastor, thankfully, you started off the series because I get it, you've been doing this a while. But uh, Ashwin and us, we've been just doing it a couple of years. So trust me, this is not because I'm an expert, uh, but I know my God is, and he's teaching us, right? So um, that's where we are uh, speaking from, and um, it's just an encouragement for everyone. Like, I just wanted to start off with a reminder. Um, Psalms 127, verse 3, it says, Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him, and precious in his sight. And basically what we are saying is, yes, we've been given these children, and we are stewards of God's gift to us. Amen? But it's not just, um, and, yeah, and yes, so for parents, the calling is very clear, right? We are given this responsibility. We will be equipped to handle this responsibility. And God is teaching us a lot in this process as well. But it's also for the church. There are so many different kinds of families. There are parents, like the traditional families we know, mom, dad, and of course the kids. But then you have extended family, you have single parents, you have parents who cannot always be there with the kids. And the mantle upon the parents is still the same. We are still called to be stewards of his gift to us. And so what happens is we all have to ask God individually what that looks like for our own families, right? But the calling is the same. God is going to teach us. God is going to equip us. And yes, there is grace and mercy to cover all our shortcomings and all our frailty. Amen? So never ever think that we are alone in this, but at the same time, as a church, all these kids, it's not just about my kid, it's not just about maybe someone who I know really well. The call is upon the church to watch out for these kids as well. Amen? So with that in mind, let's start off. Um, today, I just wanted to cover, um, we've talked about basic trust, we've talked about releasing kids into their calling. And today I want to talk about some foundational principles of modeling our faith to our families. Amen? The first one I want to talk about is our commitment to God's words. Right? So the first point, uh, commitment to God's word. The word tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, 6 to 7, these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart, you shall teach them diligently to your sons and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. Note that the above verses refer primarily to times of leisure, not just working, resting at home, taking a walk, spending time with our family. In every aspect of our life, the word has to penetrate and the word has to come naturally to us in every aspect of our life. Because when that happens, that's going to show an example to our kids as well, right? We're not going to just uh, gather them for a teaching, teaching moment. Okay, now is the only time we're going to talk about the word. 
But as we meditate on the word, as it becomes um, sowed in our heart, as you said about the seed, once it is sown in our heart, that is when it flows out and then it becomes a regular part of our conversations with our children, with our family. And that is how we are going to be when we go out into the world. Amen? So at this point, let's just make sure that we just ask God first, dear God, I want to understand your word. I want that to be real in my life because then it will be real in my, in my kids' life as well, in my family as well. Amen? The second point I want to talk about is courage under conviction because uh, as most of us have experienced, as we commit ourselves to a study of God's word, one thing you can definitely expect uh, to receive is the conviction of the Holy Spirit, right? And conviction is humbling, it's corrective, and it's meant to encourage and to teach us, amen? And uh, Ashwin touched upon this last week, uh, parenting can be very humbling. Uh, he shared a few experiences from his life also, but um, I'm grateful for the fact that uh, before having a kid, you have to get married. The experiences of, the humbling experiences that can come in marriage are so many that it prepares us for um, everything that a toddler can throw your way, everything get, that teenagers can throw your way. It first starts with, yes, better enter into this with humility because there's going to be so many experiences like this. You know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? So, yeah, uh, the Every aspect of this, I like he said, we can enter into this thinking, yes, today I got this. I know exactly what I'm, I can do. And then that is the one day that your toddler decides that I'm not going to have anything. They throw tantrums. And then that's just the, how the day started. And no, no telling how the day is going to go, right? But it, it, ex it exposes your areas of weakness. It stretches you to your limits. It drives you to your knees. But what God is looking for is the right response. Yes, we're going through these experiences, but if we have the right response to these experiences, when we read God's word, when we are convicted by his Holy Spirit, the right response will bring strength to our weaknesses. It will expand our limits even beyond what we thought we could do. If you thought you had this much patience, wait for it. It's going to stretch so much. God promises that submission to his training will yield the peaceful fruit of righteousness. If we can go to the verse, it talks about in Hebrews 12, 11, For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Amen? That's the purpose. That's the purpose of this, the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Not just for our kids, it's going to be for us first, right? When that is convicting us, when our, when our children see that, oh, there's a reason why um, my, my, my parents had a, had a moment of weakness here, but God helped them through it. God taught them through it, right? And that is what, what we really need to teach our kids. If we go on to the next point, it talks about love and authority. The foundation of successful parenting can be summed up in two qualities. Unconditional love and fair, honest authority. It has to go hand in hand, right? We're not talking about a love that says, I'm going to accept every single thing as the way it is, and you can do what you want. That is not God's design. God loved us so much. He sent his son to die for us. But at the same time, he teaches us so many principles from cover to cover of the Bible, right? These are lessons that have principles of finances, principles of um, kingdom principles that we can accept in our lives, that we, can, that we can learn from. And at the same time, when we deal with our kids, we love them. They're, they're cute. They're adorable. At the same time, they need boundaries. Boundaries tell our kids that they are loved because we care enough to set that, to keep them safe, to keep them protected, and to help them grow in God's way. We need to have both. We need to have love. We need to always have authority over them. And while we may not always express these qualities perfectly, I know that God can help us work towards them. Amen? God has said in Galatians 5, and 23, 
that as we grow in our Christian walk, the fruit of the Holy Spirit will be more evident. We see over here, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, right? And these are all things that sound amazing, but it's as we walk with God. It's not day one we've accepted God and magically everything gets downloaded into our system, right? It is a continuous walk with God. God doesn't automatically give us the gift of patience. He gives us opportunities to exercise it, right? So as we walk with God, as we learn from him every single day, bit by bit, these qualities are going to increase in our lives. And it's with that love, it's with that joy, it's with that peace that we can parent every day. We can watch over the kids that we are surrounded by, right? Amen? So in, in, if we are struggling with this, just invite the Holy Spirit to invade your heart. Help us mature and help us to, especially on those difficult days, help us to act the way God wants us to do towards our kids as well. Amen? Fair, honest authority. Let's look at the next verse, Hebrews 12, 6, 7 to 8, basically. Oh, sorry, 12 verses 6, 7, and 8. Um, I only have chapter uh, verse 6 over here. The Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastises every son whom he receives. It, go it goes on to say, it is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate, illegitimate children and not sons. How powerful is that? The purpose, the purpose of that authority, the purpose for that discipline is because he loves us, because he wants us to grow perfectly in his way and to learn from every experience that we are, that we are getting, amen? So the same thing goes for our children. If we are getting encouraged and we are old enough to understand and we are trying to accept everything that comes our way, how much more our children? When we set these boundaries for them, when we set um, the purpose for that authority over their lives, it's also upon us to encourage them through that, right? We are setting them that, but if we are consistent in explaining why God wants us to do it this way, trust me, their love and respect will grow. The first reaction may not be very positive, but trust me, it will, it will make sense in the future, right? Let's go to the next one, which says, leading by example. After we commit to God's word, after we have that Holy Spirit conviction in our lives, after we deal with our kids in love and authority, it's up to us to live our lives the way we want our children to go. Amen? In Second Chronicles, the whole of Kings and Chronicles, actually, it's a lot of um, this king has come forward, they did right in God's eyes. This king came next, they did not want to do what, what's good in God's eyes. And why is that? And it says over here, especially Second Chronicles 17.3, it's talking about the story of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat walked in the earlier ways of his father, David. He did not seek the Baals, but sought, after, sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the practices of Israel. Um, Jehoshaphat was not, uh, so we have, of course, King David, very famous, loved God, worshipped God with every, be every fiber of his being, right? Um, his son Solomon sought God for wisdom and did so many good things as well. Um, but then it goes on to say that we had Rehoboam, Abijah, who did evil in the eyes of God. And then we have Asa, who was also looking after God's heart. He wanted to do right by God. But even he struggled at some point, and then at the end, he was not completely right with God. But then you have Jehoshaphat. After David, he is, the, he is one of the most prominent examples we have in the Bible of understanding the importance of praise and worship. Amen? We have such good stories, but it did not come because he just woke up one day and he understood this, right? He wanted to do what's right in the eyes of God. He saw his father do it, and he saw that, yes, there is a reason why, the, that why God has blessed people in this country from so many years, and he understood that that was what he wanted for his kingdom, for his life as well, and so he learned from that example. 
how much more when we live out a growing Christ likeness. Again, even for us, we are not going to start from that at day one, right? But when we li when we live our lives, um, just just exhibiting to our kids how we want to learn from Christ every single day, our kids are going to see us making use of all these principles in our lives. And they will want to live by that as well. It starts with us. So when I have a moment of exasperation, I'm so like, okay, I cannot deal with this right now. I really need, I just lose my patience. But in those moments, um, and, and Levin is great with that. I, the moment we have these kind of moments, he just goes like, so are you here? How is everything? And I'm like, how, how does he do this? Right? But I know that, that is that is where it comes across like we have to remind ourselves and then our children are going to see that i was so close to getting something not very pleasant for my parents but in the correct moment god helped my parents to deal with this and so as they grow up they would also learn from that and they would want to understand what is this peace that my parents have and why are they able to do this so well right so Honestly, that is one of the main examples and one of the main reasons why um, it's not for brownie points, trust me. Like, you know this, right? Like, one parent is there who's going to feed them. One parent is there who's going to clothe them. One parent is there who's going to play with them. But at the end, when I'm putting Ariel down to sleep and trying so hard to put her down to sleep, she's going to cry for daddy. Right? So it always comes in every, in every pla person's place. So you're definitely not doing this for um, likes, uh, but you're definitely doing this for the right reasons then, <laughs> which is to do it God's way, to set boundaries for them and to help them live their lives accordingly. Let's look at the next one, leading by instruction. So leading by example, it's about how we live our lives, right? How we learn from every mess up as well. Instruction is so important because it has to go hand in hand with what we are living out. So it's not enough that we tell them about God's word. It's not enough that we teach them stories and lessons. We have to live it out ourselves, right? So your instruction is as important as your example when it comes to raising children in godliness. One of the best known scriptures, if we go to the next one, um, I, love, I love Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And that is so true. There are so many principles in the Bible, but it starts from when they are small, right? We, if we expect them to grow older and then understand the word, trust me, when I hear my, my daughter sing wheels on the bus all the time, I know that she has the capacity to accept songs and to learn and to sing these songs from her heart, right? How much more if I teach her songs that, have, that I have grown up with or songs that have God's word in them, they are taking seed in her heart, amen? So I don't need to start from when she is old enough to understand. I can put seeds now. They might not understand it right now, but it will bear fruit in time. Amen? And that is, that is how God wants us. He says always, train up a child in the way he should go. Not, not someone who is an adult. You train up a child because when they are old, they will not. That's a promise from God. They will not depart from it. And it's our, it's our responsibility to place that seed in place. It says that in 2 Timothy 3.16, it says that, the, the, the all scripture of God, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. It says in Hebrews 4.12, it talks about the word of God being alive, right? You're not just having words, empty words. You're having God's word, which is alive and able to pierce through the hearts of everyone, all the more even children. Amen? So, what are we, uh, like all these examples, I'm, I'm, uh, before I go to the next one, um, all these examples, all these principles that we, are that we are putting in place, the primary purpose, the main message that you can ever give your child is the, go is the gospel message. It's their salvation. We are putting, putting God's words into their heart. We are trying to bring them up in a certain way. But all of that is for teaching them who God is 
why God died for them. You talk to them about the concept of sin, concept about separation from God. We talk to them about why God died for us and how that choice to accept as a personal savior, that choice has to come from them. I cannot make that decision for my daughter. I, and even for, for our children, they cannot go through life saying, I have a free ticket to heaven because my parents accepted Christ, right? That choice has to be a personal choice. And that also is not, especially when they are surrounded by so many other influences, so many other stories, so many other paths to take. It's our responsibility to teach them that gospel message, to help them make that personal choice for themselves. I know there, is, there are so many things. We want them to be successful. We want them to be sociable. We want them to achieve so many talents. But I believe me when I say that our responsibility as God's stewards of this gift is mainly that we first have to help them learn about accepting God as their personal savior. If we, if we walk out of this church with nothing else, I hope you take that away. That we need our children to understand and accept Christ as their personal savior. Amen? So how do we do that? How do we grow as a family in Christ? Let's go to the next slide because I, I'm just going to go through this one. We're going to talk about asking the Holy Spirit to lead you to Bible passages that address what you and your children need to hear. And then we share the passages with them, right? So the Holy Spirit is meaningful to us. He guides us. He speaks to us. But also ask him, God, I, I don't know how it is going to work, but can you, can you tell me some Bible passages that I can share with my kids? It starts from there. And every single day, let's ask the Holy Spirit for advice, for guidance, to lead us to the Bible, lead us back to the Word. Everything has to come back to the word, and we can share those passages with them. And trust me, even before your children can understand the meaning, we can read and pray scripture over them, right? One of the things that I know I have, I have grown up with is definitely waking up in the night and seeing my father pray for me and my sister, right? And though that's the blessing that I am living with each and every day. Uh, the, power, the power of a praying parent, the power of someone who read scripture and made sure that, did you read your Bible today? Did you do this? Did you do that? But it was always accompanied by every single day I see his expression, I'm like, he's going to ask me that question. And then before that, I'll try to read the Bible because, yeah. And it started off with that. These words, these scriptures did not make any sense to me. I knew every story in the Bible. I knew all the genealogies of the Bible. But this was all theory in my mind, right? So for the sake of pleasing my parent, I did do that. But then even before I got saved, I knew that even in my darkest thoughts sometimes as a teenager, out of the blue, verses came in my mind, right? And it's not because I was meditating on those. It is just because at that moment, the Holy Spirit still worked a miracle and he still brought those thoughts to my head. He still brought the scriptures to my head. But that was only possible because we start young. We meditate on these even before, before even if they understand the meaning, trust that God is going to bring it to fruition. Listen carefully to the issues going on in your children's lives and let your response and conversation be informed by the Bible passages as well. Listen and respond. That is a very key thing that we struggle with. Um, sometimes they might not always open up to us, but whatever little they are sharing, make sure that we're always listening and seeing where they are in their Christian journey, in their life overall, and let our response, when we respond to them, how we respond, what we respond matters. Amen? When they are old enough, encourage your children to consult God's word, th word themselves. There are principles of friendship. There are principles of good company. There's principles of finances. There's principles of um, ethics. So many, so many principles that you can get in God's word. Encourage them to lo look for it themselves, basically. When we read a story to them, ask them what they learn from it. It doesn't have to be a life-changing principle, but it just has to be what did you understand from it, right? So let's encourage our children as they grow older to look to God's word for themselves for any issues that they may face. Amen? 
And the last one, which is super, super important, attend a Bible-believing church together as a family. Why, they, why we had to do that is not just for them to see an example. They have to see that the parents are trying to be rooted in a Bible-believing church because they understand the Word of God. They want that understanding to be taught by the pastors, by elders, by teaching in the church. When they see that in our lives, they will be also encouraged to seek that for themselves as they grow older, right? Because before, it is just going to be another Sunday morning of waking up early, half asleep, sitting in the pews over here. But they understand that it's important to my parents, and they can see a difference in their lives because of that. And that is how it's going to be a testimony in them as well, right? And what we want to talk about is the next one over here. I want to encourage you all with this generational blessing, right? Just remember when we read Isaiah 59, 21, as we read this particular verse, um, take it, like, as you listen, ask the Holy Spirit to bless you with this because it's a promise, not just for ourselves, it's for our generations to come, amen? It says, as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you will not depart from you, and my words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips, on the lips of your children, and on the lips of their descendants from this time on, now and forever. So basically what this, what this verse is saying is that yes, my spirit is not going to depart from you, but I promise you that the words that I have put in your mouth will always be on your lips. And it's not just for us, it's for the next generation, it's for the generations to come. And we want to claim this in Jesus' name, amen? Claim it over us, claim it over our families. And as we go through life wondering, I really, uh, there are some tough days, there are some good days, but in every single day, claim this and just say, God, I know that you are strengthening me through this because this is your design. Your design is for me to know you. This, your design is for these words to be put in my heart, in my children's, and for my generations to come, and you will bring this to fruition. Amen? Claim this every single day, and as we close today as well, walk away with this as well, that it's not, you're not alone in this. Every single time, if this is God's design for us, how much more is he going to strengthen us every single day? Amen? Amen. Amen. Perfect. Let's end with that. And we can also pray and close as well. But um, do you all have anything more to share? Yeah. Let's just stand up and pray and just submit to God every single aspect of this journey that we have. That God, you are with us in the midst of everything that we do. Lord Jesus, we ask, Lord Jesus, that, dear God, I thank you for your for, for sending your son for us. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that the salvation that you have given, that's a gift from you, Lord Jesus, so freely available to all. I pray, Lord Jesus, dear God, that you strengthen us each and every day. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our church. We pray, Lord Jesus, that in every aspect of our lives that you be the, the, the light in this life, Lord Father, you, you, you work, work so beautifully through your word, through your Holy Spirit that convicts us. And we pray, Lord Jesus, dear God, we thank you for your love, Lord Jesus, and the boundaries that you have showed us, Father, the authority that you have showed us. And we pray, Lord Father, that we use it to live a life of Christ-likeness every single day. Even when we struggle, Father, we ask for your strength, Lord Jesus, because humanly it's so difficult sometimes. And we pray, Lord God, that you will help us to live that life out for your glory, Lord Jesus, and that we will live as an example to our children. And we pray, Lord, for help, for guidance, for wisdom as we teach our children, Father, each and every day. As we set those boundaries, as we try to help them to grow in your ways, Lord Jesus, that in the end, Lord Father, they will know you as their Savior, Lord Jesus. Dear God, the, the Holy Spirit is there to guide us, to give freely according to James 1.5. If we ask for wisdom, God is going to give it to us. And we pray, Lord God, that even as you become real to them, when they accept you as their personal Christ, uh, Savior, as when, and when you send the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, the same way you, you, you encourage us by your Holy Spirit, and we ask, Lord Jesus, for wisdom, you freely give it to us. 
that same Holy Spirit is going to be there for our children and generations to come, Lord Jesus, because you are real to us. You are real to them, Father Jesus, and they will experience that for themselves. We submit all of this in your hands, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give a big round of applause. This is so impressive. Come on, Sharon. <laughs> so proud of you, you know. Um, I think it looks like they're releasing the kids as well. But, you know, if you're in this room and you're wondering, uh, well, you know, my children have grown and what about us and whatnot. If you pay attention to that verse, Isaiah 15 and verse 21, it said, it's my covenant that my word and my spirit will not only get passed on. If you meditate on the word of God and allow the Holy Spirit, it is automatically transferable to the children that you have, your adult children and your children's children. It's such a beautiful covenant that I want to meditate upon it. So amen to that. Amen? amen. Come on. You know, just want you to know next Sunday is a fellowship Sunday. So we're going to do worship, we're going to do communion, and we are going to kind of have a time together of really getting to know each other and trying to have a time that we're going to engage more. We're probably going to be on the round table. Uh, we'll do some light refreshments. The church will provide it. So you are welcome to come with your family and friends, and uh, it's going to be very refreshing. Amen to that. Let's fellowship. Let's have some time together. And by 1230, let's aim out to go out in the lobby. Well done, girl. Well done.